Namaste and welcome to Yoga with Janine. I'm Janine and this is Sam. Welcome Sam. Namaste. Namaste. So today we're going to be practicing uh, prenatal yoga <laughs> for you and baby. Um, and we're going to be focusing on um, two different things. So, well, one main thing, which is enjoyment. And especially in the third trimester where it's you know, I, I, I remember one of my students, actually two of my students that were pregnant uh, coming to class and they were like, I'm still pregnant. <laughs> I'm like, how are you? And they're like, I'm still pregnant. <laughs> yeah. And, and the last were, couple weeks are long. <laughs> yeah, they, and they just, they just wanted the baby to like walk out of them, you know? <laughs> So uh, there was this lack of enjoyment. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so we want to kind of try to find any sliver of enjoyment, <laughs> and um, and the yoga practice is a great place to find that enjoyment and just to feel you know like your body and and enjoy this these last kind of couple weeks with baby mm -hmm. um, where where baby's still very close to you. <laughs> so close your eyes, lengthen through your spine, and roll your shoulders back. Just tuning into your breath. Notice where the breath moves in the body. Surrounding baby with the breath. And the gentle massage of the movement of the muscles as baby gets massaged by these muscles, the breathing muscles. Staying present with the body and remembering our the highest principle of prenatal yoga is to be guided by your own wisdom, to be guided by your stability and comfort. So as we move through the practice, finding that stability and comfort as a way of creating for yourself that sense of enjoyment. Bring your hands together in front of your heart with the awareness of baby and the awareness of your beating heart. We'll open the practice with the sound OM three times. Just relaxing the muscles of the throat, the pelvis, and then take a deep breath in. center and then come to the wall so come to standing and we'll 
Do the pelvic tilts on the wall. So bring your back to the wall. Walk your feet forward and just a little softness through the knees so there's you don't feel the heaviness in the legs. And as you lengthen the spine, feel the space between your lower back and the wall. And just inhale into that space. And as you exhale, tuck the tailbone and bring the back flush against the wall. And then inhaling, creating that space. And then exhaling, tucking the tailbone. And feel the tone of the lower belly as you do that. Inhaling. And exhaling. And as you're doing this, you can inhale through the nose and just exhale softly through the mouth. Going a few more times. You want to feel the mobility of the pelvis, the, the, the pelvis over the thighs. And also good for the lower back if you're feeling some stress in the lower back. And one more time. Good. And then just relax here with your back against the wall. Feel the length of your spine as you breathe along the spine and around baby. And then moving just slightly away from the wall, we're going to use the chair. And so I'll show you first. So we're going to be like this. And you'll take your legs wide and your arms up the wall. This is child's pose. <laughs> <laughs> so you sit at the chair with your legs wide and just arms up the wall. Just stretching the shoulders, reaching the fingertips up towards the ceiling as you press the hands and fingers into the wall. Again, make it enjoyable. So there is no need to force any deep stretch. Just let the pose itself do the work for you. This pose can also be done standing. It can also be done more like folded over without the chair. But the chair is a nice extra pleasure. And here, come back out for a moment and just relax your arms. Just feel the, the blood coming back into the arms, into the hands. And we're going to add the abdominal tonings here. So you're going to reach your arms up and find that comfortable position in the shoulders and the back. And then inhale through your nose. And as you exhale, you're going to tone the abdomen. So you're drawing the sides of your waist in towards your belly button and belly button in. So inhaling. And then as you exhale, you're hugging the baby. Really listening to your body and tuning into the space of baby. So making sure that really embracing baby and not trying to take space away from baby. Toning the sides of the waist draw in and the navel draws in. It's like you're tightening a corset, your own mus muscle corset. And just one more time. And then relax your arms and just sit up with your spine long and breathe normally. Good. And then come back up. And then we'll move this out of the way. And then stand at the front of your mat. Just the feet wider than the hips, and 
bring your hands to your heart. And here, as you inhale, raise your arms overhead. And as you exhale, bend your knees into downhill skier and rest your elbows on your knees. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And as you exhale, just instead of bringing the hands to the floor now, you're going to bring your hands to your uh, left knee. And you'll step your right foot back, heel to the floor, like a warrior one pose. And then reach your arms up. Inhale. And just feel that gentle stretch on the back leg. Again, neither going too deep or too high up in the pose. Finding that, that space where it's enjoyable. And then you're going to open your arms and move into goddess pose. So your toes, your, you turn your toes out. You just adjust the feet so the toes are turned out and you bend your knees towards your toes. The knees move out and open the arms, open the chest. And then breathe into the back of your body so that you're not just pushing the belly out. You support the back. Inhale, straighten your legs, reach up, and then exhale, come back down. Second time, this time incorporating pelvic toning. So as you inhale, lifting the pelvic floor, and as you exhale, relaxing. And again, you can do some of the variations that we've explored before with just holding the pelvic floor um, in as you breathe normally or even pulsating the pelvic floor as you're breathing in. And whatever feels right today. And then inhale to come up, and exhale, turn to the front, back into warrior one with your arms up. Anytime we have our arms overhead, we're kind of raising the body's temperature. So if it's too much, we can always bring the arms down. And then exhale, come back into downhill skier. And just rest, let your shoulders relax here. Inhale, stand and reach up to the sky. And exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, reach your arms up, and exhale, downhill skier. Inhale, lengthen your spine, and then shift your hands to the right leg and step your left foot back. Inhale, reach your arms up into warrior, and just stretch the back leg. You might feel the stretch in the calf, in the lower leg, or even in the upper thigh. Make sure you're breathing into the back. You fill the back, expand it, support it as you lift the chest. And then turning to face the wall here on your left, open into goddess. Bend your knees. Breathe again into the back, lower your tailbone. And as you inhale, lift the pelvic floor or pulsate. You can lift multiple times, just strengthening it. And as you exhale, relax. You want to make sure the knees are not falling in, that they're moving over the ankles, pointing towards your toes. Inhale, reach up for a little bit of relief. And then exhale, just a few breaths here. Just toning the pelvic floor. Getting in your 200 reps a day <laughs> of pelvic toning. <laughs> and then inhale, reach up. And then turn to the front into warrior once again. And you can have your arms overhead, or you can have your hands on your hips. Breathe into the back. And then inhale, step forward and bend your knees, downhill skier, exhale.
exhale. Just find the balance between both feet. And inhale, stretch all the way up, reach up. And exhale, hands to the heart. Super. So move a step back behind and stretch. So take one leg into your hand and the other one either to your hip or overhead. And just find, feel the stretch in the front of the thigh. And as the front of the thigh stretches, you want to move the tailbone down, so practicing those pelvic tilts, but just the tailbone down, that part. And maintaining that. Because when we stretch the thigh, the tailbone tends to lift up. So we want to bring the tailbone down. And then release and change sides. So Sam, you have really good balance. <laughs> but if you don't have, if you don't have, if you feel that you're challenged in the balance area, you can always use the wall. Again, really make it about being, having like really enjoying the practice. Especially if you're in your third trimester, you don't want to be like dancing around too much with baby here <laughs> on one leg. <laughs> Center of gravity is off. <laughs> yeah. Try to bring the tailbone forward as you bring your thigh back. Yeah. And then release. Good. Now turn to face the right. Take a wide stance. And we'll go into warrior two. So toes turn to the right. That's it. And bend your right knee over your ankle. Reach your arms out to the sides. Lengthen the spine and relax your shoulders. Feel the opening of the hips. So as you open your hips, you want your right leg, your right knee to move towards the little toe. And in order to get the knee to move towards the little toe, you have to bring the right buttock underneath. Almost as if you're doing a pelvic tilt, as if you're bringing your tailbone under with that right buttock. And then take your forearm down to your thigh, rest it there, and stretch into extended side angle, Parshvakonasana. The arm reaches alongside the ear, and the outer arm, it turns towards the face. Turn, that's it. And make sure that you're lifting the lower belly, really supporting baby. And at any time during the practice, you can incorporate you know, either the pelvic toning or the abdominal tonings to feel more stable and comfortable in the poses. As you inhale, come all the way back up. And relax your arms, change sides. Warrior two to the second side, left toes out, right toes in. Now the alignment of the feet, because the center of gravity shifts when we're pregnant, um, the set, we might, in the first trimester, the, the, the alignment will be heel to center of the arch. And as we progress through pregnancy, it's going to be more heel to heel. So right now you're heel to heel, so that's great. And then inhale, lift your arms up, and exhale, bend your knee. Make sure you're softening the hip creases in. And then lift the lower belly as if, you're, as if you, you had your hands under your lower belly and you're lifting baby up so your tailbone moves down. That's it. And just like the first side, the left knee here moves towards the baby toe because of that left buttock moving underneath. Bring your forearm down into Parshvakonasana, reaching your arm alongside your ear. Great, exactly. So the outer armpit turns towards the face. I'm really feeling that like the back is supported. So breathe into the back. And usually in order to breathe into the back, there's going to be that sensation that you have to kind of tuck the tailbone a little bit or bring the left buttock under. And stretch long. Then inhale, 
inhale to sweep yourself up. And exhale, bring your feet together, standing at the center of your mat, facing forward. And we'll use the chair once again. <clears throat> so let's see. We'll do this way. So you'll bring your right foot um, just in front underneath the chair and your hands to your hips to begin. So the hips are pointing forward and we're gonna stretch the back of the legs. So inhale here and exhale, fold forward. And you can either reach your hands to the back of the chair or you can bring your hands to the seat of the chair. Now take your left foot a little bit further back. Yeah. And the feet here are on separate tracks, so they're not heel to heel or heel to arch. And this will help the pelvis stay more aligned. And when I say aligned, it's parallel to the front edge of your mat, or parallel to the chair, that's it. And then for those of you who feel more flexible here, you can start to bring your elbows towards the chair. And it will all depend on where baby is that day. <laughs> and this way more of your upper back is supported also when, you're on, when your arms are on the chair, whether it's on the hands on the chair or the elbows on the chair, as opposed to reaching all the way for the floor, which tends to create more of a hinge in that right hip. Feel the stretch on the back of the legs, but make sure the knees are soft in the middle. So you're not hyperextending the knees. And then climb back up onto your hands. And with a deep inhalation, stand up and change sides. in the back. So the hands can go to the backrest of the chair, they can go to the chair, and then once you start to feel that the hips align, so the right hip, yeah, comes forward a little bit, and yeah, there. So hips parallel, then you can take it lower if it feels right on the side. Because these are asymmetrical poses, we're going to start to feel which side is more flexible and which side is a little bit tighter. So it's possible that you're going to be doing different poses on different sides. On one side you might go lower, or might, the other side you'll be higher up. Just really listening to your body and finding that enjoyable space to stretch into without overstretching. the spine long, the sides of the body long as you breathe in, and melt the heart as you exhale. And then inhale up to your hands and come all the way back. So you'll sit on either cushion, so you'll come onto your knees, and we'll put the blocks, we'll use the blocks for this one, put the blocks between the ankles, and you'll sit, yeah, so you're clearing the knees, so you put, place your hands behind your knees, and you just separate your calf muscles in two. So the calf muscle has two parts to it, a, a kind of an inner part and an outer part, so you want to split those, and that will help create space in the knees. And if there's any tension in the knees or the feet, then you just lift your seat up higher with more blocks or more cushions. How's the feet? Good. Okay. Now interlace your fingers overhead and stretch, pressing your palms up to the sky. 
And here again, we have that shoulder stretch, just like when you were at the wall. That's it. Breathe into the back of your waist. Tailbone reaches down towards the cushions or the blocks here. And you press your toenails down slightly to give the legs, the ankles and knees a bit of support. And then relax your arms. And you're gonna do ekapada, so one leg forward, being careful for the knees. And because you're up on blocks, you want to make sure that you keep the knee elevated and that you're not pushing the knee down into like the hammock of the, the ligaments or the tendons. Okay. And then inhale here, lengthen. Exhale and roll your shoulders back. And I'll give you the strap here. You can hold the, hold the foot. If you're earlier on in your pregnancy, you can also fold forward and bring your hands to the floor. <clears throat> That's it. Keep the shoulders back and the chest up. And again, feeling that stretch in the back of the leg without going too deep into the knee. And really keep the, the stretch. We want it, when we stretch a muscle, we want the stretch to be in the middle of the muscle. We call it the belly of the muscle. So it would be the middle of the calf, the middle of the back of your thigh. And then inhale up. And change sides. So you'll have to come up. And just reaching for the leg. Yeah, readjust the calf muscle. And then take your left leg forward, hold the strap, okay. straighten the left leg without um, hyperextending the knee. And because the ligaments are going to become more and more slack as we progress through the pregnancy, you want to make sure that the knee actually feels, it will feel a little bit bent, but you want to look at it and it should look straight, <laughs> but it should feel slightly bent. <laughs> Spread your toes, lengthen through the spine as you inhale, and then if you're folding forward, you fold forward, but really respecting baby's space and find that enjoyable space for both of you. Come to sitting on the floor. You can always sit on a blanket or, or a bolster. And bring your feet together in Baddha Konasana. Bound ankle pose. So soles of the feet together. Lengthen up through the spine. You can relax your gaze. And either holding the ankles or bringing the fingertips behind. And just find that opening in the inner thighs. Just feel the natural flow of the breath, the, what we call the, the full body breathing. Full body breathing doesn't mean that the breathing's intense, it just means that the whole body is breathing on its own <laughs> in a way that's enjoyable for you and baby. I 
And then you're going to stay here, but you're going to take your feet wide. Both legs wide. And keep a bit of activity through the feet. It doesn't have to be extreme, just something that reminds you that your feet are there and that, they're, that there's energy flowing in from the feet into the pelvis and from the pelvis pressing out towards the feet as you rest your head on the chair. And Sam has good flexibility here, so her lower back is actually tilted forward so she's hinging in her hips and if the lower back is round or if you feel any crunching in the abdomen you want to make sure that you sit up on some cushions, some pillows, blankets, whatever you have at home to elevate the hips so you feel that nice release of the pelvis where the tailbone is moving back. Again that pelvic tilt but this time tailbone back. Working with the chair is a good way to work without feeling like you're necessarily working. <laughs> to do your practice and at the same time get this relaxation and rest in the body. And then you'll stay with your legs wide, inhale and lift up. And as you exhale, you twist to the right. And we'll move the chair. That's it. Just feel the left side of your waist moving to the right. As if you're lifting baby up and over to the right. Again, really working together with baby in these poses. And then inhale back to center and exhale other side. So take your right hand Here, the right side of the body turns to the left. So you lift baby as you inhale, and as you exhale, bring baby over to the left. <laughs> Have a nice practice to learn how to you know, use your muscles to move baby around. side of the body, breathing as well as the left. And then inhale, come back to center. And to bring the legs together, you relax the legs and just use your hands to gently bring them in.
And so today we're going to be toning, vocal toning, with the different tones that we have. So we're going to start with the main ones, which are, <coughs> which are the sound of um, mm, at like M. So just with your exhalation, and feel free as you're toning to move the body if there's any little aches or pains in the body that you want to find comfort. sitting and you'll sit on the cushion <clears throat> and then we'll tone the different vowels so <clears throat> so the first two that we did were just kind of normal sounds that the body might do mm, you know and then uh, uh, <laughs> and just like when we get used or a voice in that way, then it can also have a calming effect for us, as opposed to sometimes when we do tone that way, it's usually like the body's in distress or pain or discomfort, and we're just trying to find comfort. So it's a good way to use, we naturally and instinctively we use the voice. Mm -hmm. So if we know that, then also psychologically we'll, we'll be able to calm ourselves and calm that baby. And the other uh, tones to practice are the vowels. Uh, a, E, I, O, U. So, A, E, I, O, U. And we don't, we don't tone Y, though. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> In this case, it's not a vowel. <laughs> so, bring your hands to baby. Close your eyes. And just find your comfortable breath. And we'll tone each of the vowels two times. And there's no, you know, prescribed length of how long to tone. It's just, just the comfortable sound and the relax the throats. So when the throat is relaxed, the pelvic floor also relaxes. So this is also good, um, like, if there's any um, tension in the pelvic floor or hesitation sometimes even giving birth. Um, just toning can... When it relaxes the throat, if we can focus on relaxing the throat, it will also relax the pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So close your eyes, rest your eyes, and just moving at your own pace, going through the sound, uh, or A, sorry, A. So A.
relax in the throat with the sound sound you the echo, the sensations of the body and of baby's body. Baby will sometimes respond to one sound more than the others. It might vary from day to day. We can use the tones, the vocal tonings as a way of communicating with the baby, sending these rippling vibrations through baby. When it feels right for you, you can lie down on your side. Make sure your head is supported. the legs or under your right knee. Just make yourself feel comfortable in the field position. Just continue feeling those rippling sounds as you rest and even just the mental thought of the sounds can have a similar effect, not the same effect, but every thought is, it creates a ripple. Every thought is a vibration that ripples through the energetic field of the body. So even just thinking these sounds create a ripple. you rest, you can just go through those, the repetition of the different vowels, A, E, I, O, U, and just feel how that thought, as you exhale, ripples through the body, and really using it as a means to create this inner harmony in your body and in baby's body. And only 
do it for as long as it is comfortable and then just rest in the natural vibration of your own body and of baby's body resting together. you have with your baby this time this moment this time of pregnancy and start to move your fingers and your toes and then press yourself up to sitting Sit in a comfortable cross-legged position, nice seated pose with your eyes closed and one hand on your baby's heart and one hand on your heart. Feeling the connection that you have with your baby. And uniting the two hearts with one sound, the sound of Om. Let's take a deep inhalation. Oh. May this time be one of enjoyment as well as all the other discoveries that we go through. May it be one of enjoyment. Namaste. Namaste.